Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. My name is Ron Grossman. This is our Sunday morning uh, message in the book of Hebrews. We're going to be picking up at verse 4 of Hebrews chapter 12 today and continuing in our studies on this subject. Until uh, before, ex excuse me, and before we start, let's stop and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Father God, thank you for each person looking in today. Thank you for eternal life in Jesus and thank you that we can freely study your word. May the time be used here to give glory and honor to you in everything we say and do, and that perhaps one person may turn to you uh, for salvation. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So follow with me, please. We're going to read verses 4, 5, and 6 of Hebrews chapter 12. It says this, You have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as to children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. I was talking to somebody who lives near New York City just recently, and we were talking about just our perceptions of just society in general. And my friend Tony spoke about the generation that currently is that younger generation in the 20 to 30 year range and maybe even a few years older he described them as the generation that where everybody gets a medal nobody knows what it means to fail nobody knows what it means to deal with adversity and in a sense there's a little bit of this discussion here today and in what we mean by that is resisting and striving uh, resisting to blood and striving against sin. Now, you never take a passage of Scripture out of context without attaching it to what it really is all about. And so really, we're referring back to the great biblical hall of faith in chapter 11, where is now everything is brought into perspective of the author and finisher of our faith, who is the Lord Jesus, in verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 12. We looked at the first three verses last time. And we were talking about him in verse 3, considering him that endured such contradiction. That word contradiction really is literally understood as hostility. And lest you be worried and faint or be discouraged in your own minds. In that telephone discussion with my friend in New York City, the biggest issue that came across was nobody knows how to deal with failure. Nobody knows how to deal with discouragement. And nobody seems to want to know when someone says to you, no, you can't go forward. There is the immediate reaction, which is, but I want it, and I want to get it, and I want to get it now. Now, resisting unto blood. What does that really, really mean? Well, if you're a believer, how easy is it for you to know any of these things unless you experience in life what it means to resist unto blood. If you want an example, and one commentator I consulted on this said this, if you want an example of resisting unto blood, try looking at Stephen in Acts chapter 7 and 8, who resisted unto blood for sure. He was martyred, killed for his faith. Look in, at the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, who realizing at that moment that it's, he is on the precipice of leaving this world, he would, he would eventually be beheaded for his faith, still understanding what it means to resist unto blood, he still writes to encourage Timothy. Those two examples of Stephen and Paul as standing right to the end when there's difficulty in the life of a believer is the opposite of the world that we seem to be living in today. Read the accounts of Nero's atrocities against Christians at this time in history, which was one of the things that the Hebrew believers in Rome were encountering. Nero had no problem finding Christians and using them as human torches on their crosses as they were being crucified. He'd have them doused in oil and lit on fire alive. And in verses 3 and 4, it is Jesus who endured heavy opposition 
to the point of death. And I wonder how many of us would be willing to endure heavy opposition to the point of death. Have you resisted to this point? The writer goes on in verse 5 and says this, And you have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children? Now, the word here, children, literally could be uh, translated as sons. You are a son or daughter of God. If you are a follower of the Lord Jesus, then you are a son or a daughter of the Lord Jesus. And it speaks here specifically in this verse, chapter 12, verse 5 of Hebrews, it says, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint. Don't be discouraged, that means, when thou art rebuked of him. This is from uh, the book of from Job and also from Proverbs. Job, in chapter 5, verse 17, endured the chastening of the Lord. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 11 and 12, speaks to this as well. If God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, think how he gave his only begotten son. He gave him unto the resisting unto death. Jesus, who was fully man and fully God, paid the penalty for sin in his human condition by dying in your place. And still the writer here is writing to us to make us consider what it is to resist unto death. To resist in a difficult situation. It's not easy. And when you think about this, how many of us have been placed in situations where we have resisted to the point of death? We're still living in a place in North America where we have the freedom to worship. We have the freedom to share our faith, to speak openly on the street about it. I was reading today, on the day that I'm recording this, that there is a law that had been passed in the state of California, the, taking advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic, forbidding the meeting of Bible studies in private homes. People are not allowed in certain counties in California to gather for a Bible study in a private home. It is against the law, and if it's to be found out, there are fines and various things that would happen. So you see, we could be on this continent this could be a foreshadowing of being on the precipice of being held accountable or not being allowed to at least freely practice what it is that we believe. Now think for a moment. The work of Israel's Hope Ministries, I've done this now for over 33 years, first with another ministry organization and now over the last 30, uh, 32 with uh, Israel's Hope. We have, uh, 22 of Israel's hope, excuse me, we have had in-home Bible studies for years. It's almost the backbone of what we do, to sit with people in a home where you can study the scriptures. Because what we have always held to is that a Jewish person will not feel overly comfortable going to a church, but they will accept an invitation to a private home. And if people are going to be now saying, at least in the state of California, you cannot do that. You cannot meet in your private home to hold a Bible study. It is against the law. We could be on the precipice of something greater even happening. Jesus endured heavy opposition to the point of death. Would you be prepared to endure that kind of heavy, heavy, heavy opposition? Because, as it says here, whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Now, chastening and scourging are words that are Old English to speak to some very, very serious kinds of uh, physical torture brought upon people as punishment for disobeying the law. It's in reference, in this case, to what was happening to Christians in Nero's Rome. We're not living like that right now, but there could be on the horizon things like that could be happening, where you, as we see in California, you are forbidden to meet. Now let's look at verse 7 and continue on just a little further here. In verse 7 it says this, If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastens not? For those of you who are parents, I have three children, grown adults. I have grandchildren now. I'm watching my children 
being a parent now and experiencing the things that I experienced with them. Dealing with sometimes difficult behavior and having to um, manage it. You do this and deal with the difficult behavior and manage it. Why? Because you love your children. And you love them enough that you want them to grow as best as possible. So you endure with them the chastening. And sometimes you have to be the chastenor. It's not easy to be a child on the other end of it. To realize that you have to give up and uh, put up with certain things that you're not allowed to do. Yet God remains uh, a, a loving father so much that he wants to chasten you, not because he is mean-spirited towards you, but because it is his way of having you to grow to become the person that he wants you to become. This is why he's a loving father, God. Verse 8, But if ye be without chastisement, chastisement, whereof are all our partakers, that you are illegitimate and not sons. I was talking to someone recently, struggling with health issues, and uh, they're dealing with some pretty serious stuff right now. And one of the comments this person made to me was, why is it that all the wealthy people, the people who have positions of power and authority, and etc., how come nothing bad seems to happen to them, and only bad stuff happens to people like you and me? Well, that's not true. Because we have no idea what goes on behind closed doors in anyone's home, regardless of one's station in life. The point that's being made here is that you would be an illegitimate individual, meaning that you would be outside of God's family. He only chastises, he only chastens those whom he loves, those who are outside of the family of God. God leaves. Now, bad things will happen to good people. There was a rabbi who wrote a book about that a number of years ago. It was also a rather cynical approach to the question. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people, too. And good things will happen to both classes of people, as I've just mentioned. But one thing that is for certain is that if you are one of God's people, you can rest assured that life as a believer in Jesus, a Christianos, a follower of Messiah, do not expect it that you're going to have a life that is full of wealth and health and everything going right in it. I have known believers over the years who have had to spend time in hospital and people who have given up and lost, uh, not given up, have lost their lives to chronic illness but they had a sense of peace knowing that when it was over on this side of this part of life, that every single human being who has ever lived is going to live forever. And they knew where forever was going to be. Where are you going to spend forever? And this is really the case here. Where will you spend forever? Israel's Hope Ministries exists to make that knowledge known to Jewish and Gentile people alike. My question to you is, have you come to a place where you know for certain where you would go if tonight were the last day of, uh, night, day of your life? If you were to die today, where would you go? I know for certain that God has given me a place eternally with Him. And that only comes because I have asked for the atoning work of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, to be applied to my life. It's when you reach the point that you realize that you'll never do anything. All the works of man are seen as filthy rags, the book of Isaiah says, before God. But God has done it for you. The most amazing thing that ever has happened in all of human history, I've said this repeatedly over the years, is that God became a human being like you and me and willingly went to die in your place on a Roman cross. He withstood unto death, not for himself, but for you and for me. Where will you spend eternity? If you have a question about that or would like to know more, I'd like you to email me. 
you can write to me at ron at ihopecanada.org. And if you're a believer looking in, and we've been a help to you today, we praise the Lord for that. We exist to do that, to teach the church and to reach others with the gospel as it is through this medium here. We're a faith ministry. We re rely on God's people to meet our needs through the Lord moving them to do so. So, if you feel that uh, the Lord may be directing you to contribute to the work of Israel's Hope Ministries, go to our webpage at www.ihopecanada.org. And when you're there, you can find that you can give a donation through an e-transfer, or you can give a donation through PayPal. Either way is good, or you can find our regular mailing address and send it to our P.O. Box here in Ottawa. If you are in the United States and would like to give to the work of Israel's Hope Ministries, you can send a check to I Hope USA, 2330 Norton Lane, North Bloomfield, Ohio, 44450. And until next time, when we'll be back with more studies in the book of Hebrews for Sunday and book of Acts midweek. We thank you for being with us. Let's play, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to close our time. Father God, thank you for each person who has looked in. May we see real fruit come from your uh, word here today as presented. And pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time, we say Shalom.